What happens when you mix a record-breaking flood with a 100 million year old seafloor? You get a giant gorge that provides one of the coolest windows into geologic history in Texas. In the last video, we explored the incredible caverns, dinosaur tracks, and springs near San Antonio, Texas, which is where the Geological Society of America will be hosting their GSA Connects 2025 meeting this coming October. In this video, we'll explore Canyon Lake Gorge, which is another amazing dino track site, but we'll be focusing on other exciting fossils preserved in these rocks for this video. The rock exposed here is Cretaceous limestone, mainly from the Glen Rose Formation, deposited around 110 to 105 million years ago in a warm, shallow sea that covered much of Texas at the time. Now, most of the geologic events that I talk about occurred millions of years ago, but this gorge didn't exist until 2002 when nearly 35 inches of rain fell upstream of Canyon Lake overwhelming the spillway and for the first time ever water flowed over it for six weeks straight in a matter of just days this intense flood water eroded up to 30 feet of limestone carving this one mile long gorge and exposing millions of years of geologic history and since most of these rocks were deposited in environments ranging from shallow marine to lagoonal or tidal flat type depositional environments we can find everything from ripple marks stromatolites and algal mats bioturbation trace fossils and of course, body fossils. Body fossils of mollusks like giant ammonites, reef building rudists, and other cool gastropods and other bivalves, as well as echinoderms like crinoids, also called feather stars, and echinoids like sand dollars and sea urchins. Okay, future Rachel here, I forgot to mention the other incredible type of fossil we found in this region. And I kid you not, they are some of the coolest things so unappreciated but these are single-celled organisms that lived in this sea a hundred million years ago that make up practically the entire rock in some of these areas in canyon lake gorge these are called foraminifera or forams i've talked a lot about them on my channel geogirl but these are single-celled protists that are big enough that we can see with our own eyes well not their cells, but the shells that they make around their cell is big enough that we can see it most of the time with our own eyes. They're tiny, but we don't need a microscope to see them. And the ones in these rock exposures here are mainly Orbitulina, which is just the type that was around in these rocks. And it was just so abundant that it fills these rocks and it kind of makes up the matrix of what the other larger macroscopic invertebrate fossils are found in, which is insane. And actually I have a 4M on my shirt currently. Um, this, this isn't a plug for my merch, but this is my merch. It's not the Orbitulina 4M. I don't have a shirt with Orbitulina, unfortunately, but it is a 4M. So anyway, these guys are tiny. I wanted to shout out them as well because I didn't want to miss that you know the, these amazing little single-celled organisms that got so big we can we can see them with our eyes they're not extinct they still live today and you know if you go to a carbonate beach you're likely to find some in the sand if you pick it up and look really closely you'll see some intricate structures those are forams um but yeah the ones in these rocks just filled the rocks completely and it was just really cool to see these little discs everywhere and before I send you back to more well-scripted Rachel, I'll show you a little clip of Suki here. She unfortunately didn't get to come on the trip with us this time, but hopefully in future trips, she will join us. And yeah, now back to more polished Rachel. <laughs> Although we kept getting distracted by some of these very wacky looking twisty mollusks and beautifully preserved sea urchins, my favorite were the rudists. Why? Well, let me tell you the story behind these weirdly shaped curvy clams. Before around 550 million years ago, animals were primarily soft body. Thus, reefs or rigid biological structures in the shallow ocean were primarily built by microbes, for example, microbial mats. But then from around 550 to 250 million years ago, the primary reef building animals were corals. Today, the primary reef builders are still corals, hence why we call them 
coral reefs. However, there was a period in there from around 250 million years ago to around 66 million years ago, the Mesozoic era, which marked a hiatus in coral-dominated reefs. Why? Well, the corals that built reefs before 250 million years ago, rugose and tabulate corals, died in the greatest mass extinction of the Phanerozoic Eon, called the End Permian Mass Extinction, or nicknamed the Great Dying, which occurred around 250 million years ago. And before corals could make a comeback in the Mesozoic era, bivalves saw that open niche, or ecological role, and took over. Obviously, not intentionally, just by way of random, evolutionarily advantageous mutations and natural selection, but eventually, this led to bivalves, yes, clams, that looked a whole lot like the corals that had died out, which we call rugose or horn corals. And we call these bivalves that dominated reef building in the Mesozoic, rudists. This is one of my favorite examples of convergent evolution, when two lineages independently evolve the same adaptation or trait because it's evolutionarily advantageous. In this case, the trait was body morphology, but another example of convergent evolution can be things like bats evolving the ability to fly independently from birds. And actually, there's another great example of convergent evolution present in the Mesozoic era, which we see in large vertebrates rather than invertebrates. That is marine reptiles, which looked a heck of a lot like marine mammals, but I'll link another video down below if you want to learn more about that. But this flood and erosion didn't just expose amazing fossils within this 100 million year old limestone. It also exposed faults that formed within this limestone around 20 million years ago. The faults at Canyon Lake Gorge are part of the Balconis Fault Zone, a wide belt of extensional faults, faults that result from crust stretching or pulling apart, that formed during the Miocene. As the region was uplifted and stretched apart, massive blocks of Cretaceous limestone fractured and dropped down along these faults, resulting in a landscape where ancient marine sediments were tilted, broken, and in some cases, heavily eroded. Kate and I, having just visited Death Valley, which is part of a larger extensional fault regime, had a lot of fun pretending these smaller faults were like small-scale models of the half grobbins in the Death Valley region. And if you're interested in touring these fossils and or faults, GSA is offering expert guided field trips focused on both the fossils in this region as well as the faults and the structural geology of this region. So there's something for everyone and more information on how you can sign up is linked in the description box below. With that, thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you will come join us for GSA Connects 2025 this October. I'll see you there. Bye.